So my mic was not working during the first part of the recording of this, so there is going to be a little bit of a mismatch. This video, I am going to be preparing two different types of pancakes. I will be preparing Swedish pancakes, which I am using this book called Fika, which then I will also be using a book by Nigella Lawson, How to Be a Domestic Goddess, or in this case a god, on how to make an American style pancake. I hope that you find this entertaining and that you will stay tuned to watch me prepare this breakfast for a few of my friends that are coming over. So we're going to first start with the Swedish pancake recipe and in order to do so we first need to get some eggs. I need two and a half cups of milk. I'm going to just put these on the counter over here since if I'm going to make more pancakes, I'll, I'll need these ingredients again. The only thing left that I have to add to this is um, some flour. So here we're going to add one cup of flour, but I want to make myself some tea. So that's what I'm going to do first. The other thing that I tend to do um, for this recipe is I tend to add a little bit of uh, cardamom to the batter because I feel like that adds this nice little secret ingredient that has a little bit of, of flavor. Um, I'm going to move the camera a little bit and uh, access my pantry. 
we have our flour, and then a yeah, cardamom. Okay, so I think the ratio of two and a half cups of milk to one cup of flour is very light. Um, that's what makes these pancakes so incredibly thin. Um, I sometimes will add a little bit more flour than what the recipe calls for um, because I think that it's just uh, sometimes a little bit too runny for me. some cardamom. The other thing that I sometimes add to this, which I'm going to add, um, is some protein powder. So I'm going to add I often use this isopure uh, protein powder just because it has minimal ingredients. Um, you know, in one scoop, you get 25 um, grams of protein and you only have 100 calories. So it's pretty concentrated. It's not, you know, you don't have all that added sugar and bullshit that you have in... Um, other protein powders. I'm going to add just a little bit more flour because I like to be a tad more dense than what is recommended here. So let's put together the recipe that we have for American breakfast pancakes that Nigella has written for us. Um, well, not for me exclusively, but you know, for the world. Um, so the first part is flour. Um, this calls for one and a half cups of flour. So. I think I'm going to do half the recipe because I don't feel like getting more flour. And so we're going to cut everything. Okay, so we need one and a half cups of flour. One tablespoon of baking powder. This is one thing that you may have realized is a difference already between the two recipes. In the Swedish recipe, there was no um, baking powder or baking soda. Um, however, that's kind of the main ingredient in the American um, pancake recipe that gives it, you know, that makes it expand and be so big. Um, so that is the secret ingredient that really separates these two things out. 
in addition to the ratio of um, liquid to flour. We're going to add just a little bit of salt, some sugar, We are going to add a cup and a third of milk. Two eggs. And then we're going to add some butter. We have two tablespoons of butter to add here. Um, but I'm going to see if I have any coconut oil or something that is a little bit easier. Because um, I don't want to have to melt the butter and then wait for it to cool and all of that I'm a little bit impatient at the moment so we're gonna add um, about two tablespoons of coconut um, coconut oil that will give it a little bit of a different flavor profile to the, the Swedish ones And while we're at it, I think um, what would be a nice additional like, secret ingredient to add is just a hint of vanilla extract to this. So I'm going to just eyeball it and add about half of a teaspoon. And let's mix this together. So if I look, you know, at the ratio of just milk and flour, this is very close to a one-to-one -one ratio of milk and flour. Whereas in the Swedish recipe, we had two, two and a half cups of milk to about a cup of flour. So again, that's, that's, the other major difference here is just the amount of milk to flour that you're giving up. Okay. So, we have our two, um, batters. We have our Swedish and our American. And let me just show you the difference between these two. If I turn on the light, here you can see the Swedish one. It's way more liquidy. You can see the little bubbles. Um, whereas here's the American one and it's way more thick. Um, so the consistency is, is quite stark and, and quite different so let's start cooking um i'm worried whether i was a little too ambitious or not for this particular project we shall see um let me grab these two and we'll start with that and 
right, let me turn them on. The first thing that we'll want to do is butter these, these pans. And so whatever you have, um, you could use the, I could use the coconut oil that I have out. Um, I'm going to just use a stick of butter and just give it a nice little coat. We're going to use this, um, for the Swedish pancakes. If you don't have a pan like this, this is something that you can find easily online. So I highly recommend it. Otherwise, um, it's really hard for you to get that, that uh, traditional like small circle shape. So I'm expecting that this is going to be the part that takes the most amount of time. Um, but this will give me time to do other things that I need to complete. So we got our Swedish pancakes there and then let's start the American pancakes. And usually these pans need a few moments for them to get the right temperature. So I'm going to just do, maybe I'll just do two um, here just to get it started. Okay, so let me start putting away some of these uh, things that I have on the counter. So in addition to the pancakes, I think I want to make some sausage because I feel like sausage is always a nice thing to have for breakfast. Um, there's going to be three of us, so I'm going to do six sausages should be good. Also have bacon as a treat. Um, both the sausage and the bacon were um, purchased at the farmers market here in Syracuse. And um, you know, I don't eat meat that much, and so when I do, it's kind of like a, a treat. So I'm gonna cook a few pieces of bacon. Wash 
So once you see the little bubbles um, forming in the pancakes, then you know to, to turn it over. Um, so there's a nice little golden hue. Um, and that's how you know that it's, it's cooked enough on that side. It's really up to you how dark you want it. Um, you know, sometimes I want it uh, very brown and then other times not so much. And so it really depends. But I tend to cook a variety because people like their pancakes uh, in very specific ways. And that's bound to satisfy most people. I'm always a multitasker um, when it comes to cooking. So, you know, when things are frying or cooking, I'm always putting away things or cleaning my dishes, um, just getting things ready uh, for the next stage. So usually for the Swedish pancakes, they usually only need about a minute or two um, once the, the temperature is just right on the pan. So you can see that there's a nice little um, uh, brown spot there, and, and that's usually the sign that it's good. I sometimes will flip um, back the pancake if I feel like the, the top player wasn't brown enough to my liking and so um but once the, the pan is warm it will be a much quicker process Decided to uh, put on a leather glove because, you know, these these pants can be quite hot, and this is a good way to protect yourself. All right, so we have about thirty minutes left for me to cook all of these things, and then also for me to make some coffee. You don't need to, to butter um, the pan every time you put on a new um, new series of the batter. But I find that it's useful at least every other or, or every like three batters to put it down. Here I put it down just because um, there was a part that was sticking um, and I figured that's what it needed. All right. So now it's going to go a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm going to have to 
be paying attention. I also am going to try to keep the batter separate so that I don't mix the two consistencies. The next thing that I want to start um, preparing is the coffee. And, um, you know, this usually takes a few moments for me to grind the coffee up. Pancakes. So you can see now after just a few, maybe it was even two minutes um, of it cooking, the pancakes become now quite brown very easily. Do the same thing for the American. These are probably quite done. Typically, the, again, the, the Swedish pancakes usually only need like a minute um, on the second side. So both of my stoves are set at medium. Um, I have a stove that goes from low to high with numbers in between. So it's set at a five, um, which is about medium.
when I make the Swedish pancakes for myself, I typically will cut the recipe in a third. Um, and that's just because the recipe has three eggs. Um, and so it's easy when you're dividing recipes to divide it by, um, to do it in regards to the egg. So you could either do a one egg, a two egg, or a three egg recipe. And uh, this was a three egg recipe. The full recipe is three eggs. And so I typically will reduce it down to one. Let's try it out. Oh. can see what a mess I'm making. I can imagine all of you kind of screaming at home, just being like, I cannot believe you're doing that, but I am, so you're gonna have to deal with it. I am not running a professional kitchen. I am running my own uh, home kitchen, and this is how things uh, typically go. Now, when it comes to these two pancakes, I do like to have different um, toppings on them. And so in the on the Swedish pancakes, I feel like they um, are a little bit more versatile than the American ones. So on these like little ones, I like to have sour cream. Um, I would say it's a favorite ingredient of mine. Um, Really, any type of jam and sour cream is, is amazing on these. If you are into maple syrup, that certainly works as well. Um, and I will be having maple syrup for the American pancakes for sure. So one thing that you want to um, know, and this is more of a problem with the American pancakes than the, in the Swedish pancakes, is that um, for the American pancakes, because of the the way the batter is, it is possible that um, 
the outside of the pancake really cooks before um, the inside. And I've had that happen a few times where the pan is, is too hot where the outside cooks, um, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really cook in the inside. And so that's where, you know, I was just moving my, my, um, uh, stove to be at a lower temperature because I was noticing, you know, that it still seems, um, for these later pancakes that that could be a possibility. Um, when I flip them, there's a little bit of like ooziness there. And so that's a signal that you have your pan a little bit too hot and you got to cool it down. Um, so just keep that in mind as you work with this, um, especially when it comes to cast iron skillets and um, flames in general, you will realize that you often need to do some adjustment. It's not something that is uh, constant. You know, the pan may be a perfect temperature, but it hasn't reached its like uh, stable temperature, let's say. Um, so sometimes there's a little bit of a game like that. And I often feel like I'm turning it up uh, high at the beginning and then, um, you know, having it pretty low in the middle and in the end um, of my bake just to prevent it from, from burning too much. So we were almost out of the American batter. You can see, um, you know, the pancakes are much bigger. And so the actual cooking of it um, does take a little less time than the Swedish one. So I'm going to start getting everything prepared at least and putting it on my um, on my table. Let's open up the windows. have about 17 minutes left for me to put everything together.
to make coffee out of this. So I'm going to estimate that there's probably about two more um, goes of the Swedish pancakes. Alright, so we had the last of the American style pancakes going, um, and the Swedish pancakes are coming along. And they cook very quickly, so it's easy to uh, burn them. So once it starts becoming a little bit more of a hassle to get the pancakes out, that's when I reapply butter to the pan, um, and that usually solves that issue.
so that you can see all the pancakes that I've made uh, so far. <laughs> It is indeed a pancake. It's got a bounce off. I'm gonna butter one last time. The butter does make it um, cook much quicker, so that is something that you have to be just cognizant about. All right, so I think the pancakes are done. As always, um, I would really appreciate if you like and share this video and make sure to click the subscribe button and tell all your friends about the leather cook and what you're learning. Have a good day.